anyone following the field of artificial intelligence right now will know that AI agents are all the rage. And a lot of people are talking about the different frameworks available for multi-agent workflows. I've previously done reviews on Crew AI and Autogen, but now I'm gonna be looking at Agency Swarm. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through a web search agent that I've developed on Agency Swarm. I'm also gonna give you my honest opinion about whether I think it's ready for production or not, and how it compares to the other agent frameworks that are out there. So stick around to the end if you wanna hear that. I'll paste the link to the GitHub repository containing the full code for this project in the description for this video. So go check that out if you want to examine the code in more detail. If you like this content, give us a thumbs up. In the comments, you can give your own opinion about what you think about Agency Swarm if you've used it or any of the other existing multi-agent or agent frameworks out there. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more large language model and artificial intelligence content. Okay, let's get into technical details. Before I dive in headfirst into the Python code, what I want to do is just talk through some of the promises made by the developer of Agency Swarm to give you a view of the philosophy of development for this framework and how it's a little bit different from some of the other frameworks that you might have used before, like Crew AI or Ostrogen. So under key features, there are a few things that the developer calls out. So the first one is customizable agent roles. So this is really no different from what you might have already been used to in Autogen or Crew AI if you've already used multi-agent workflows. The next thing is full control over prompts. So this is really a sticking point I've had with some of the other frameworks. There are deep within the repositories of things like Autogen or Crew AI, there are really hefty prompts. Um, I'll pull up an example of that on screen now with Autogen. So you should see there's a, a prompt for the assistant agent that they have in Autogen. The issue with these is that they often inter interfere with your own prompts that you write for the agents and it can cause unexpected behavior. So one of the things that Agency Swarm promises is that it's lightweight in terms of the prompts it used to control agent workflows. The next thing is tool creation. So you can build um, custom tools to use with your agents in Agency Swarm. And this is pretty standard across agent frameworks. They have effective communication as well. So the developers created a custom tool to help orchestrate agent workflows. So where it's a bit different is that in the other frameworks, you set the number of rounds that the agents do, or you choose some kind of predetermined um, orchestration workflow. The exception to that is Autogen, where you can now put in a custom workflow. But with Agency Swarm, it works a little bit different. There is a, a tool that is used to actually orchestrate the agent workflow, and I'll show you what that looks like shortly. So the other, the other key feature here is state management. And what's interesting about this is that Agency Swarm, instead of using the chat completions endpoint like the other frameworks do, Agency Swarm is actually using the assistance API from OpenAI. So this means that the framework does only work strictly with OpenAI, but it's taken a little bit of a different approach. And the philosophy is that the developer believes the assistance API is quite powerful and there's going to be a lot of development on that and it's going to improve a lot in the near future. So they're kind of banking this framework on that assistance API. And there's a lot of benefits to actually using the assistance API. And I'll get into those as I start demonstrating the code and running and running you through how the web search agent actually works. And the last thing here is deployable in production. So they say agency swarm is designed to be deployable in production. I'll give you my opinion on whether I believe that is the case or not. One thing to say is that everything I'm saying now is obviously at the time of recording. AI frameworks do move really fast. And I'm sure some of the things I mentioned here are still going to be relevant in a few months time, but some of them would have moved on. So just bear that in mind when you're listening to this video. All right, let's look under the hood of some of the code for Agency Swarm. So what I want to do is I want to examine these two claims really quickly. So the first one is the efficient communication of agents and the other one is full control over prompts. So these are kind of interlinked and I'll explain that to you why, or it will become clear why in a second. So let's look at the GitHub repo for Agency Swarm. So specifically, we're looking at this agency.py module and we're looking at the send message tool. So if you recall in the key features, one of the things they said is efficient communication between agents. So the way they're doing it is actually using this send message tool which acts as a way for the primary agent to actually communicate with the other agents in your workflow. So it's a bit, as I was explaining before, it's a bit different from some of the other frameworks that you've used where um, either you, you 
provide your own kind of custom graph for workflow and you set a number of rounds that it takes to execute that. What's happening here is they use this sends message tool and there is a small prompt in here. But as you can see, this prompt is a lot lighter weight than the one that you saw earlier in Autogen. And it's through this prompt that the actual agent orchestration happens. So yeah, this is, I've, I've had a dig through this repository and this is pretty much the only prompt I could find in there. So I think they do deliver on what they say when they say that there aren't tons of hidden prompts in here. It's just for this send message tool. And, um, you know, you can see it's, it's quite clear about just breaking down the problem into steps and then distributing those steps to the different agents in the workflow. So your primary agent will act to do that. If it's not clear, it will become clear as I start demoing the web search tool. So, um, just be patient and you'll see how that works. But I implore you to actually go into the agency swarm GitHub repo and explore this stuff for yourself. Okay, so let's talk through the Python code for the web search agents that I've developed. So I'm going to talk you through the prompts.py file, which obviously contains the prompts for the agents. I'm also going to talk you through the tools and show you how I built custom tools for searching and scraping the web. And then I'm going to talk you through the agents.py file. So, so I'm, not, I'm not going to go through the configurations files today, just to keep this video as short as possible. If you want to get into how to set this thing up for yourself, I'm going to put a readme in the GitHub repo. So you should be able to follow that and get set up. All right. So let me talk through a bit about the agent schema that I've used. So it's a really simple workflow. All I have is a manager agent and the manager agent's responsible for kind of overseeing the execution of the task. So what the management agent does is it takes the task, it breaks it out into logical steps to solve that problem. And then it also passes the steps onto the researcher agent who has access to tools to search the internet and scrape websites and then return a response to the management agent. So the manager agent is the primary agent. Um, that manager agent will get the query, break it out and pass those steps onto the research agent who will then use the tool to actually go and find the answer to that. And then after the answer has been found or after it's kind of decided that the answer is, is complete or all the steps have been followed, we will return a response from the management agent. So that's how it works high level. It's really simple, just two agents in this workflow. One that basically oversees everything and gives the steps to actually complete the task and another that actually executes on the task using tools to search the internet and scrape websites. That's it. So let's talk through a little bit about the prompts to give you an idea about how these things work. So Agency Swarm asks you to provide descriptions and instructions. So the descriptions are high level. For the management agent, you are a manager agent. You direct the actions of the researcher agent. You are responsible for creating plans, strategies, coordinating activities, and compiling the final response. So that's a high level description of the management agent. Uh, the instructions for the management agent are as follows. So you create a comprehensive plan for the research agent to follow. You begin by thinking step-by-step step to comprehend the task at hand. You come up with the logical plan to complete the task. You direct the research agent to complete the task. You provide feedback and guidance to the research agent. You assign tasks to the researcher and review their work. You compile the research findings into a final response. Your final response must include citations and references to sources used. Your answer should use the information presented by the researcher. You should be aware of today's date to help you answer questions that require current information. Here's today's date, um, and you've got time zone in UTC and a date time that is read in by a function in the agents of Python. So yeah, this prompt could probably be optimized. Um, you know, it's something I did quickly. So yeah, it's far from optimal, but the idea is, you know, management agent comes up with a plan and then gives instructions to the research agent to actually go and find the the answers to um you know go and use the internet search tools to give answers back to the management agent who then can come up with a response to the user and then we've got the research agent so you are a research agent you're responsible for conducting research tasks and then we have instructions for the research agent so you use the tools available to you and the plan provided by the management to conduct your research you must provide the sources to all of the information you find you can use the search engine tool to search for information on the web. You can use the scrape website tool to scrape content from a website. You must, oops, spell that wrong. There you go. You must first use the search engine tool to find information. 
You must then select the best source from the search results and use the Scrape website tool to extract information. So that's it, pretty simple. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and the last type of prompt we have here is a mission statement prompt. So this is kind of like the shared prompt. So where the research instructions and the researcher descriptions are only available to the researcher and obviously likewise for the management instructions and management description, they're only available to the manager agent. The mission statement is the shared prompt that gets shared across all of the agents. So it's kind of like the collective goal of this organization. So it's your team of agents working together on research tasks. The team consists of a manager and a researcher. The manager creates a plan for the researcher to follow. The researcher conducts research using the tools available. And then, yeah, goes on to kind of talk about the roles of each. So that's the mission statement prompt. All right, so that's it for the prompts.py file. Next, I'm going to show you the tools.py file and show you how we use the agency swarm framework to actually create those tools. Let's look at the custom tools I've created using the agency swarm framework. So what you do with agency swarm is you create your tools as a wrapper around the base tool provided to you by agency swarm. And it's really simple, actually, because all you're actually doing is, you know, you're providing a description for your tool. So make this as accurate as possible because this will be interpreted by the large language models that are using that tool, I believe. Um, you also asked to give a description for the inputs to your tool. So you can see that here for the search engine, I've provided the description, uh, the search engine query to be executed by the tool. In between, you can provide whatever helper functions or additional functionality you want. So you can define those as methods in between or whatever you wanna do. But the final thing that you must do is define a run method. And the run method is actually the execution of the tool itself. So as you can see here, we're just executing a search engine query. And the return that we want is the formatted search engine results. So if you watch my previous video on custom agents, this will look pretty familiar to you. And you can see how simple it is to actually set up a tool in Agency Swarm because of this base tool class that they give you. Um, you know, you just build your tool as a wrap on top of the base tool class, and it's pretty flexible. The same goes for the web scraper tool. So to scrape the website, you provide your description up here about what it does, description about the inputs, and then you define your run. That's it. That's literally it for the tools.py file. That's all you need to do to define tools in Agency Swarm. Next, we're going to explore the agents.py file and see how we put all of this together to actually run our multi-agent workflow. Okay, so we're in the agents.py file and we'll talk through this quickly. So initially, there's a lot of functionality to just load API keys and things like that. So I'm not going to go into detail about that. Uh, you can explore the code yourself if you want to understand how that stuff works. But we're essentially just loading the OpenAI API key into an environment variable. Um, this is the date time function. So this is giving our management agent an awareness of today's date, which is important for some of the types of web search questions that we might want to ask about current events or events that are going to happen in the future. So I found that this actually helps to make sure that our web search agent is searching for the right things. Right. So this is probably looking familiar to you if you've used Crew AI or Autogen. There's some kind of agent wrapper here. And within the agent wrapper, we define the name of the agent, which is for this particular agent is the management agent or the manager agent. Then we give the description, which I showed you earlier in the prompt supply file. So that's the high level description of what the agent is doing or their responsibilities or whatever you set it as. The instructions, which are a bit more low level and detailed. And then you can kind of set the model arguments here. So you can set things like temperature, max max prompt tokens and things like that. So there are things specific to Agency Swarm and I'll employ you to look at the documentation if you wanna know what you're setting here. Um, from what I'm aware, the documentation doesn't explicitly mention that you can set the model here, but you do set the model that you use within the agent wrapper. So just remember that if you're working with Agency Swarm, um, you set the model here. When I dug into the GitHub repo, I noticed that by default, it's using GPT-4 Turbo. So that already tells you something. It already kind of tells you that by default, it probably works best with the GPT-4 models rather than 3.5. Anyhow, I'm going to try it out with both and show you um, what those results are. So 
um, when we're demoing that, I will change this to GPT 3.5 first and see how it works with GPT 3.5. And then we'll move on to 4.0 and see how it works for that. And yeah, it's exactly the same pattern for the um, research agent. You use the agent wrapper given to you by Agency Swarm, and then you set your prompts. The only difference here is the researcher agent obviously has access to the search engine tool and the scrape website tool, which I defined earlier and I showed you in the tools.py file. And then you can set your model. So you can actually have different models for the different agents. So if you want to use GPT-4.0 for the manager and you want to use 3.5 Turbo for the researcher, you can do that. The other key thing is actually setting the orchestration workflow. So the way it's set is using this kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It's uh, like maybe a, a graph or, um, I'm not sure graph is technically the right word, but a workflow, right? So your primary agent is set first and then you set the communication direction and the communication direction goes from left to right. So the manager speaks to the researcher and the man so the way I've set it up here is such that the manager will direct the researcher. Um, obviously this can be an arbitrary number of team members in your agency. And, um, it is also possible to have communications between agents that are not the primary agent. So for example, if I had, I don't know, like a quality assurance agent in here, I could have a communication workflow between the researcher and the quality assurance agent, for example, or between the quality assurance agent and the researcher where maybe they're provided is providing feedback or something. I, but Yes, you can. It is possible to do that. So you set that within this agency wrapper. And then within the agency wrapper, you set the shared instructions too. So remember the shared instructions are shared across the whole agency. It's shared across both the manager and the researcher. And I showed you that in the prompts.py, what that looks like. You can set model parameters here. You can't set the model within the agency, but you can set things like temperature, max prompt tokens within the agency. And from what I saw in the GitHub repo, the agent values override what you set in the agency, I believe. Don't hold me on that. I, I believe that's what I saw. But if I'm incorrect on that, please correct me in the comments. But from what I saw, the agent values override what you set in the agency. So just be wary of that if you're setting different values across your agents versus what you're setting in your agency. And that is it. That's It's quite simple. Actually, um, you know, the framework does provide a lot for you in terms of the, the infrastructure to orchestrate the agent workflows, which is really useful. And it means that you don't have to kind of provide a lengthy script. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to run the demo. And they provided a pretty useful command line tool for doing that. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to try it with GPT 3.5 Turbo first, and then I'm going to switch it up to 4.0 and see how it performs with 4.0 versus um, GPT 3.5 Turbo. I'm also going to keep track of the cost to see how costly this thing is to actually run, because that's been one of my major gripes with the frameworks. It seems like they're quite expensive. So let's see how costly it is using the Agency Swarm. Let's actually demo Agency Swarm and let's see how it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch out these models. I know I could have set a very well at the top. Um, I just didn't. So let's just switch them out where they are. GPT 3.5 Turbo. Now I'm going to pull up my PowerShell. So I have the PowerShell ready. And to execute this, all I want to do is run Python agents.py run. And hopefully it should actually be running. Oh, here we go. Yep. So we've got the um, command line tool that they provide. And I find this to be quite useful for experimentation and testing. So this is this is a good feature. Before I do that, I want to show you something in the Assistance API. So remember, with Agency Swarm, we are actually using the Assistance API. We're not using the chat completions endpoint. So what you can see now is the Assistance API is, is blank. But what's actually going to happen is when I run my agency, I'm going to create the assistance here in this assistant API um, via the agency swarm scripts that I've written. So that's something that is probably a bit different to you if you haven't yet used the assistance API or if you've just used the chat completion endpoint, you won't be used to that. So you'll actually see the assistance here. And you, what's useful about the assistance API is that it actually creates a 
conversation thread for that assistant. So why that's useful is you don't have to worry about memory and all of those types of things. The memory is already stored within the thread. Uh, so it means that you can actually have a real chat like experience with your multi-agent workflow um, and something that isn't possible with the chat completions endpoint unless you actively manage the memory yourself. So you actually actively have to create the um, short-term or long-term memory that you want with the assistance APIs done for you. So that's a, that's a useful feature about using the assistance API for agents rather than using the chat completions endpoint. Okay, so before I run a query through my agent workflow, I want to show you the cost that we're working at. So what's the cost position we're at now? Um, so we are currently at 319, I guess, for what we we're using the GPT 3.5 turbo model. We're at six cents. We're at six cents for the GPT 3.5 turbo model. Um, total, we're at $319. So yeah, just be aware of that because I'm going to track the cost of running a query through my multi-agent workflow using the agency swarm framework. So let's just keep track of that. So I'm going to come up with a query off the top of my head. It's going to be a multi-hop query. So let's do something like, what is the current weather forecast in the location where the next Premier League game is going to be played. So this is a multi-hop question because first we need to obviously know what's the next Premier League game and then we need to know the location of that game and then we can find out the weather from that information so let's see how the multi-agent workflow works with that type of question so those of you that are like an american audience or you know you're not familiar with football or you might call it soccer but we call it football in the uk the premier league is the top league of our um soccer league let's just say that so let's find out so we started the thread and i'm going to show you how that looks like in the assistance playground All right, so you can see we have the question here and then we've got the manager and the manager has come up with some primary instructions. So it says, I need to find out the current weather forecast in the location where the next Premier League is going to be played. Um, and then it's saying the researcher is the recipient. So it says, please research the current weather forecast in the location where the next Premier League game is scheduled to be played. Um, we've got some additional instructions here. Please provide specific location of the next Premier League game, right? So it's kind of broken out the task in in sorts, I would say. So then it's messaging the, res um, the researcher. So the manager is talking to the researcher here. And what's nice about this already is it's quite clear what's happening compared to some of the other frameworks. You know, I, I worked with Crew before and it wasn't clear who was talking to at all. So this is much nicer. So it says, please research the current weather forecast in a location where the next Premier League game is scheduled to be played. So that is, that's going to be tough. But let's see what happens. So the researcher is executing the function and it says next Premier League game location. So that's good. So it's found out the next, it's, it's searching for the next Premier League game location. So it's managed to kind of simplify the task a little bit. And we have some results from our search engine so then it should choose the most appropriate one. So it has selected actually the most appropriate one, which is Premier League fixtures. And you can see that here. Um, let's see where the exact link is coming in. So we've got Premier League.com, Premier League fixtures snippet, um, Premier League, Premier League. Maybe it's this one, Premier League fixtures. Yeah, uh, no, it's not that one. So that's Premier League Summer Series. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, Pre yeah, it's the top one. So Premier League.com slash fixtures. So yeah, it has selected that, which is good. We scraped that website. And then 
researcher to the manager. The next Premier League game is scheduled to be played at the Emirates Stadium in London. Let me find out the current weather forecast for London. So the researcher is then going back in. Um, and they've got current weather forecast, London. It's going through the search engine. So it's grabbed the AccuWeather link. And then we have scraped some data from there. The researcher has returned a response. So the current weather forecast for London, where the next Premier League game is scheduled to be played at the Emirates Stadium is as follows. And then we've returned some weather. So I'm not going to go through the exact weather, but what I can say is that we haven't returned any citations and the models are prompted to return citations. So that is kind of a fail on that sense. Um, and also it seems like the manager wasn't really getting involved um, as much as it should have been. It was more like the researcher was doing everything, um, which is obviously not how I've set up the work workflow to work. So I think that just goes to show that GPT 3.5 probably is not the best model to use with this. And, you know, you have to probably use something more advanced. And that is why they defaulted to GPT-3, sorry, to GPT-4 Turbo when they designed the framework. So we will probably try a similar question, but we're going to use GPT-4.0 and see how the workflow performs using the latest and best model available from OpenAI. Before that, I want to show you what the playground looks like. Because remember, I said to you at the, at the start that we actually create those agents in the playground. So let's have a look at the assistance. Um, that's usage. Here we go. So if I reload this, what you'll see is the researcher agent. Yep, there you go. So you've got the research agent and the manager agent threads created here. So you can see the prompts that I actually set up. And you can see. Um, so oddly enough, the temperature is set to one, but I recall setting it to zero. So maybe that's an error with the framework itself. Maybe it's an error with the page. I'm not completely sure, but yeah, definitely the temperature was set to zero. So I'm not sure why we're at one now, but you can see the model here is GPT 3.5 turbo. So there might be some kind of error in the framework where, you know, the temperature is being set to one, but it should actually be zero. It's being overwritten somewhere. So that's something to bear in mind if you're using agency swarm two. Okay. Let's try this again, but let's use GPT four. Oh, and let's see how we perform. So let's switch it out. I'm going to try a different question this time. And remember to pass this, it has to actually return the citations too. If it doesn't return the citations and the sources, then it's I don't consider it a pass for a web search agent. Um, I've hit save. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to restart. So it's quite easy because all you have to do is hit exit and that will come out of there. And if I go to Python agents, py run, it's going to restart that, um, command line interface. There we go. And it even says what I've changed. So it says updating manager and researcher because obviously I've made those changes. And let's just see if that has read in in the assistance playground. I suspect it has. I'll refresh. What I expect to see is um ah yeah. So there you go. So now we've got GPT 4.0 instead of GPT 3.5 here. And that's for the manager and the researcher. So it is it is interesting. I'm not completely sure why the temperature is set to one. Maybe I'm being silly. Maybe I have set it to one in the script somewhere. I don't think I have. Oh, no, I've definitely set it to zero. And it's even set to zero at the agency level. So that looks like maybe there's a bug to me. But anyway, it's a small thing. I'm not going to fixate on that right now. Um, let me step back into the agency. And let me try another question. So I'll ask something similar. What is the current weather in the city where the 
let's say, what is the current weather in the city where the second president of the USA was born? Let's let's do that. Okay, so this is good because the manager's done what we expected to do. So it's actually outlined some logical steps to to answer that question. So that's really good. That's exactly what I'd expect. So to determine the current weather in the city where the second president of the USA was born, we need to do the following steps. Identify the second president of the USA, determine the city where this president was born, look up the current weather in that city. So that makes complete sense. Let's start with the first step. The second president of the USA was John Adams. Now let's find out where John Adams was born. Next, we will look up the current weather in that city and I'll proceed with these steps. So here we go. So the, this is, you know, when I talked about this tool that Agency Swarm uses to kind of communicate across agents, I believe this is it. So I believe this is, this is part of it because what you have is you have the arguments, which are like my primary instructions. You are a researcher, agent, you are responsible for conducting research tasks, recipient, researcher, message, identify the city where John Adams, the second president of the USA, was born. Additional instructions, please provide the name of the city and any relevant details about his birthplace. So I think this is actually the prompt from that, um, I forgot what it's called, the tool that is inherent to Agency Swarm to communicate across the different agents. So... Yeah, I think that's inherent to that tool. Um, that's the prompt working there. So that's not my prompt. That is the, the prompt from Agency Swarm. So you can see how that contributes to the workflow. And then you have identified the city where John Adams was, uh, the second president of the USA was born. And that is the manager communicating with the researcher. And then the researcher is actually executing that by using the search engine. So you can see the name of the tool used, search engine, and we're returning a search engine results page, which is great. And then the researcher has selected the Wikipedia page as the best source. So let's just see if we actually have picked up a Wikipedia page here. It's always important to check because you know these models do still hallucinate. So I'm hoping it didn't just hallucinate a source, but nope, we've got it here. So that's where it is. You can see the Wikipedia page for John Quincy Adams birthplace. So we're picking up that Wikipedia page and we've scraped it. So that's the information from the page. Research has come back with a result. So John Adams, the second president of the United States, was born um, in Quincy, Massachusetts. So I think I said John Quincy Adams, but I've probably read that wrong. Um, at the time of his birth, 1733, the area was known as Braintree, which later became Quincy. Okay. So John Adams, the second president of the USA, was born in Quincy, Massachusetts, originally known as Braintree. Now let's look up the current weather in Quincy, Massachusetts. Um, so let's have a look. We're doing a search here. Um, so no, this is the communication step. Apologies. We're not doing a search yet. That's the communication step. Um, so it's the same pretty much apart from the message, which is find the weather in Quincy, Massachusetts. So it says we've got some additional instructions as well. Please provide the current temperature, weather conditions, and any other relevant weather details. And then we we have the management, the manager agent talking to the researcher. So the manager is asking the researcher to make that search. The researcher is making that search. So the exact search is current weather in Quincy, Massachusetts. The research has come back with, or the tool has come back with a search engine results page from which we picked up the weather. So we're picking up weather.com, weather today in Quincy, MA. And that is, let's just confirm that that's actually one of the sources. Weather.com, weather today, Quincy, MA. So I can see it there. That is one of the sources. So that's good. We've scraped it. And by the way, I'm just returning this to the screen to the terminal you don't have to return this you can actually not print this to the screen it's just to for me to confirm that it's actually going in and scraping the the web page and you don't have to print the, the search engine results page either you can just have it as the agents talking to each other great so the research has come back 
we've got some temperature and then our manager has provided the final response and we actually have a citation here for the weather so we can jump into the weather channel There you go. So we're into the weather channel. Let's just keep that there. So straight away, we have 63 degrees Fahrenheit, which is great. Quincy MA. Um, let's see what else we're saying. So it says partly cloudy, I guess. Ah, yeah, there we go. Right at the top there, partly cloudy. Wind. Let's see what we're saying for the wind. 15 miles per hour. So that's correct. Humidity. 64% visibility, 10 miles. So that has seemed to work very well. Um, in terms of if John Adams was the second president of the USA, I don't know US history, but I'll just double check to make sure that's correct before um, I close this out. Yep, second US president. So that is correct. And Braintree, Massachusetts. And it's said that, you know, Quincy was named Braintree before. So I assume that's correct. So it seems to have done everything well. So it works well with GPT-4.0. Doesn't work so well with GPT-3.5 Turbo. Let's have a look at the cost. So remember, I did run Turbo beforehand, and then I ran 4. So we're going to have to just discount for the cost of running Turbo before. Um, okay, so I'll refresh my usage. So we were at 0 0.06 um, dollars or six cents for turbo. So when we ran turbo, um, so 3.5 turbo again, so that's only one cents increase. And for overall, we had three dollars and 19 overall. So if we deduct one cent from the overall, so it's 336 to remove the GPT 3.5 turbo. So 336 to 319. So we have used 17 cents worth of um, tokens. So that is, it's not cheap. It isn't cheap. It does work well. But again, for this type of thing, I always say with these multi-agent frameworks, they tend to only work well with the higher spec models from OpenAI. Um, the use cases that you need to justify that type of cost are obviously beyond just search. So I think if you're going to do something really advanced, like maybe you're doing something with a legal chatbot, for example, that has special access to some legal documents or something, and it needs to be really accurate, there needs to be citations, all of that, maybe a multi-agent workflow could work. Um, but you'd have to get your clients to pay a lot for it uh, because, yeah, 17 cents per search is is pretty expensive in, in my view. Yeah, maybe something like software development. So if you build a software development agency, if you can actually build something like that with this, then maybe you could justify the cost building a software development agency. But yeah, it is expensive. 17 cents per search isn't cheap. And it, that will add up, especially when you start getting volume. Okay, so I want to show you what's really useful about the agents, using the agents rather than using the chat completions endpoint, right? So if I go back and I say something like, please tell me the current weather in the city to the west. Right, let's do that. So why it's useful is, remember, these are conversation threads. So it actually remembers the last conversation we had. So if I say, please tell me the current weather to city to the west, it knows we're talking about Quincy because that's the last conversation we had and it's still in the thread. It's forward thinking from the developer to use the assistance API rather than the chat completions API just to make functionality like that a lot easier. And yeah, it's more natural now. You can, you, you're you having a conversation with it rather than, Every single time you ask a query, you're essentially starting from scratch unless you've implemented your custom memory. And that's something you'd have to do if you're working with the chat completions API. 
So yeah, we're, we're kind of stepping through that logic again. So I'm not going to step through the whole logic. I, I gather you know how that works now. Look, I'm not going to go through and check the accuracy of this response. I'm just going to assume that it works. But the point that I was trying to illustrate here is that you can, because it's a conversation thread, because we're using the assistance API, all the memory is already automatically stored. So you can actually have a proper conversation with this thing rather than just, you know, having the one-off question and answer type in experience that you get if you use Autogen or if you use Create AI because they're working with the chat um, completions endpoint rather than the, the assistance endpoint. Okay. So I think, I think that's, that's pretty good. I think it works quite well. Next, I want to talk about my verdict on agency swarm and whether I think it's ready or not for production. So stick around for that because you might be surprised at what I actually say. So I want to give you my verdict on agency swarm. And I'll say straight off the bat that I really liked it. I found it easy to work with. I found the documentation clear. I found the source code easy to interact with too. So when I needed to figure things out, it was easy to find what I needed to find in the source code. It only took me about an hour to put together that web search engine. It was really quick. And that that is a credit to the developer and the, um, you know, I can tell that there's a lot of thought that's gone into the framework and making it so that it actually acts as a true framework rather than trying to do everything for you. So I would say in comparison to Autogen and Career AI, Agency Swarm has been my favorite to work with and it seems to work the best of all of those multi-agent framework that are available right now. So in comparison to Autoden and Crew AI, I would definitely choose to develop again with Agency Swarm just because I found it was it was just much less of a headache to get it working. I think using the assistance API is, is really forward thinking. And I think the developer is definitely onto something with the assistance API over the chat endpoints. And also what I've seen from Autogen is that they're probably looking to build in the assistance API into their framework too. So I, I think I saw, I came across a GitHub issue raising that as a, a point, and I think it's on their roadmap to do it. Um, yeah, so, you know, you can see from the example I ran that having the assistance API and having those threads there is actually very useful for having a true conversational experience with multi-agent workflows. And I think that's what most people are looking for when they're, when they're building this stuff if they're building it for like a chat-like application that's going to act as a, an, an assistant. Um, the other thing that I found really useful is the way that the tools are structured. So using that wrapper approach where they give you a base tool and you build a wrapper on top of it, I thought was really intuitive and easy to do. It took me only a few minutes to set up those web search and web scraper tools. So that was fantastic. Um, the UI. So the UI is really good. I think that command line interface and the the output from the agency swarm was much better than both Autogen and Crew AI, actually. I think of all of those three, Crew AI is the worst, followed by Autogen and followed by agency swarm. I thought that tracking what was happening with agency swarm was a lot easier than it has been with the other two. I didn't demo it in this video, but Agency Swarm also has the option to use Gradio as a front end too. So there's an option to just run your agency instead of running it in the command line, you can run it in Gradio, which is, if you guys haven't heard of Gradio, it's like a front end application, a Python based front end application that you can stick on top of your, your apps. So that's fantastic. The other thing I think is the agent orchestration is really good. The agent orchestration seems to work well doesn't work that well with GPT 3.5. So when I built my own custom web search tool, because I rigidly specified the orchestration workflow, it works well with GPT 3.5. And I think that there is still an argument for building custom assistants or custom agents because of that. If you're building it for something really specialized, you might actually be able to get away with using a cheaper model because you can just rigidly define the workflow how you want it. And, you know, as I mentioned, I haven't tried Autogen's custom workflow yet, but it might be the case that with Autogen's new custom workflows that you can rigidly define the workflows there too. 
I like the fact that Agency Swarm doesn't have huge numbers of hidden prompts in the source code. That's good because you know that you're not having some hidden prompts messing with the prompts that you put into the system. So that is, that's a win for Agency Swarm. Now, would I say Agency Swarm is ready for production at this moment? Um, unfortunately, no, it's not ready for production at this moment. And I think the big reason for that is actually to do with the assistance API. So using the assistance endpoint, although great, and I think is forward looking, you will notice that, you know, especially at the time that I recorded this video, the assistance endpoint is actually still in beta. So it's not actually ready for production yet. So I wouldn't be taking agency swarm into production yet just on that basis. And it is designed only to work on the assistance endpoint. As soon as that assistance endpoint does go into full production mode, then I think there is an argument to say that you could probably start trying to experiment with agency swarm in production. The other, the other aspect with production is you have to choose your use case very carefully because obviously the cost of this thing is still expensive. Now, bear in mind, I haven't optimized any of my prompts. There's probably cheaper ways to do things. And if I did optimize my prompts, maybe I could get it to work better with GPT 3.5 Turbo. However, I do doubt it because the owners, oh, sorry, the developers themselves have set GPT-4 Turbo as the default model. So I think they know what they're doing. They set it for a reason. I, sus I suspect that's to do with the send message tool. I think that really only works well with the higher spec large language model. So that's, that's my verdict on Agency Swarm. It's a pleasure to work with. I think definitely use it for experimentation. It works well. It does what it says on the tin for the most part. Would I put it into production right now? No, because the assistance API is still in beta and it is working off the assistance API. But you know, in the near future, that might move into prod. So when that assistance API moves out of beta and into production, then I think it's going to open the way for a lot more creative applications using multi-agent workflows, more so than... Autogen or more so than Create AI, in my opinion. If you enjoy this content, give the video a thumbs up. Tell me about your opinion about Agency Swarm in the comment section. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel for more AI and large language model based content. Thanks for tuning in and see you again in the next video.